Spring maintenance number four. This is my 1974, if I remember correctly. Flandria Comet 3. This is a 50cc 3-speed with also three gears on the steering wheel. But these gears are much closer, which is way nicer. I've had this thing for a long while. I've used to take it to school now and then. And uh, this bike is a real workhorse. It never let me down. I think I've never broken down with it. So this bike was originally sold by Hendrix in Woman, which is like 45 minutes from here. A pretty cool, well, cool story. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, at my previous job, I had a colleague that was from this region and I asked him about Hendrix and he actually told me that he retired uh, like one month ago when I asked it, which was pretty funny. So uh, he was still in business. Uh, I think it was two or three years ago. So he has been around for a while. This uh, fuel petcock is on reversed. Uh, the, the switch is actually on the inside, which is really annoying. You have this hole in the case to reach it, but it being on the inside, you have to break your finger to reach it and actually activate it. So this is one one thing I tried. I will try to adjust while it's on the maintenance. Uh, I have to check oil, but I think I've also done it last year or maybe two years ago. I, I have to check it. But this thing did a lot of miles, so maybe it's a good thing to change it anyway. Fuel line and filter, pretty old, pretty dirty. Uh, carb is also very, very dirty. I think that's one of the reasons why if you open the fuel pet cog, the carb actually leaks. I think the fuel float is stuck on the ground. Um, back in the day when I used to drive this to school, I've actually managed to find a double header for these bikes. Uh, it lost power, but it had a twin exhaust, which looked cool and it was very loud. They could hear me coming from probably a town over. Uh, but I ditched it now because it was getting too loud and obnoxious. So I went back to the original one, uh, one-sided exhaust. So this bike has, of course, pedals. So uh, this is also a torpedo-style brake. Let me show you. So this torpedo style brake is the same uh, mechanism, but a bit better than the Royal Noor. And I think some other bikes have it as well. So you push the pedals backwards and that activates this uh, lever here that actually pulls the rear brake. Otherwise, this bike uh, drives pretty cool. I like it. It has uh, some decent speed and power. It does uh, some nice wheelies in first gear if you time it correctly on the power band. So uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. So without further ado, let's uh, get into maintenance. I'm going to start, I think, with uh, draining the fuel so I can loosen the fuel pet cock and uh, flip it over. Maybe actually clean it out and uh, throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. And uh, we'll go from there. There we go, one uh, carburetor. So here again, same system for these carburetors. The fuel feed 
Uh, this banjo bolt has a little filter on it as well. The bolt, the fuel bowl with the float in it. The main jet. Uh, this is uh, the little screw to adjust the idle. Let's get the actual jet out. Here you can see the tiny holes from the jet. This is also a single jet. So this thing can go in the ultrasonic cleaner. This one is missing its filter. There should be a little fuel filter in here. Just like the carburetor from the Gitan. Let's take the cap off. The fuel bowl itself is completely dry, but it had dirty. The carb is back out of the ultrasonic cleaner, and what a difference. This thing looks a lot nicer. So let's uh, put it back together and put it back on the bike. There was actually a tiny fuel filter in this banjo bolt, but it got stuck in there. That's why I thought there wasn't any. A new gasket. There we go. I've also cut a new set of uh, gaskets for the inlet manifold because uh, yeah, the old ones are completely gone. So let's put this thing back on the bike. The carb is back on. So let's uh, see if we can uh, remove this fuel pet cock and maybe clean it up a bit and mount it in the correct direction so that we don't have to break our fingers to open it. Oh, damn. Ooh. That's dirty. I didn't know there was so much uh, dirt in this fuel tank. This thing normally doesn't struggle with uh, carburetor problems. Believe it or not, I've actually had a spare fuel pet cock that matches this thread. So I'm going to mount the new one and clean up the old one and keep it as a spare uh, in case of emergencies. Huh. I'm not sure if I should over tighten this. Yeah, this is too much. Huh. Uh, although I think this is this won't hold. I think I'm going to add a bit of fuel and see if it starts leak leaking or not. I've added a decent amount of fuel. I'm going to let it sit for a while and see if we have a leak or not. It doesn't start leaking right away, which is already a good sign. I'm going to let it sit for a while and uh, check back in a couple of minutes and start making the fuel line with a new fuel filter. So it's been sitting for 10 or 15 minutes and we have no leaks through the fuel petcock. I've made a new line new fuel filter it's a bit a, of a funny route because of the the angle of the fuel petcock maybe i'd have to check my supplier if they have any on the other direction um but i think this is good it looks uh, looks fine 
this will be much easier to reach uh, through the hole in the cover which is uh, perfect uh, a pro tip that I just found out so I've had this braided fuel line for a while now I've been using it on all, on, on all of my bikes I really like the look of it and it adds a bit of protection because of the braiding but if you cut it uh, the cut ends uh, start to start to unwind and you get all the, the braiding actually becomes loose so what I've just discovered is if you um, cut it and you hit the ends with a lighter so that the braiding melts a bit and it sticks together then that probably will stop the unwrapping but another pro tip don't do it on the bike while you have fuel on the line or anything because fuel and fire they don't mix well they actually do mix but in an engine not outside of it so uh yeah giving it a little bit of uh, fire on the on the ends uh, will hopefully stop the unwrapping of the of the protection so fuel is done now let's check the spark plug hopefully you can see this on camera yeah we still got plenty of spark I think this plug will do for for a while now it's actually a bit on the lean side I think for some reason this one is actually going a bit yellow I don't think I've seen that before huh. maybe I have to switch it although the last ride was with some dirty fuel so maybe mm, I'm going to leave it in and uh, I'm going to check it again after the test drive and see uh, what color it gets so let's leave it in for now so we got fuel, we got spark there's only one thing that's left to check uh, for this round of maintenance and that's the oil in the gearbox so on these Flandria engines you have uh, the oil fill plug this plastic nut if this gets uh, really tight, this is really annoying to remove because of its because it's plastic and you can get a wrench on it. So it will just uh, destroy the nut. And it also has this little screw here, which is the um, oil level screw, I think. I, I think it should be called like that. Uh, so basically you add oil from the oil filler plug and uh, you fill it until oil starts seeping out of this hole. And that is the correct amount of oil that should be in this block. So what I'm going to try and do is uh, undo the screw and maybe retract some oil out of it with a little uh, syringe and uh, check the condition of it and see what's what. Apparently there is a bit of a bit too much oil in, but I think judging on the color of the oil, oh please get back in. So, as you can see, the oil is still pretty clear. It's not black or anything. Don't, uh, don't look at the red. That's some old oil from another one. So, yeah, I think this oil is still good. So, I'm going to run it for another year. Should be fine. And, uh, yeah, so let's uh, continue cleaning this bike up. And let's get it back together and ready for a test drive. So everything is back together, I still have a couple of hours of clean weather I think, I hope. So I'm going to make a small little test drive just to get some groceries and uh, let's test this thing if it's ready for, uh, for summer. Let's go.
back from our grocery run. This thing runs like a charm again. It, uh, it idles a bit high, but <laughs> that's fine. It looks uh, clean, dries perfect. I did notice that this uh, gearing handle is a bit on the loose side, so I'll have to tighten the nut again maybe. But uh, yeah, apart from that, it runs, uh, runs perfect. So uh, we'll be seeing uh, a lot more of this. I will be trying to make some extra videos of this driving to make a, a nice trip. So uh, if you've liked this video, like please leave a like, uh, smash that subscribe button if you want to see more and uh, see you in the next one. Bye bye.